Yellowstone National Park is one of the most visited national parks in America, receiving over 3.8 million people in 2020, a 5% increase from 2019. Beneath the beautiful landscape though is a massive chamber, and it's this chamber that's of particular interest. Geologists and researchers have long been conducting tests around the area, ensuring that any activity is thoroughly investigated. The United States Geological Survey has been very open about what would happen if the supervolcano erupted, saying the following. If another large caldera forming eruption were to occur at Yellowstone, its effects would be worldwide. Such a giant eruption would have regional effects such as falling ash, and short-term changes to global climate. Those parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho and Wyoming that are closest to Yellowstone would be affected by pyroclastic flows, while other places in the United States will be impacted by falling ash. The amount of ash would decrease with distance from the eruption site. Such eruptions usually form calderas, broad volcanic depressions created as the ground surface collapses, as a result of withdrawal from partially molten rock below. Fortunately, the chances of this sort of eruption at Yellowstone are exceedingly small in the next few thousand years. End quote. Although the United States Geological Survey says that an eruption is not due within the next few thousand years, they also admitted that you cannot predict when an eruption is going to happen, saying that you can't go by previous eruptions. The USGS said the following, Yellowstone has experienced three at 2.08, 1.3 and 0.6 million years ago. This comes out to an average of around 725,000 years between eruptions, but this is based on the average of just two numbers, which is meaningless. End quote. It's for this reason why some have kept a close eye on the data in order to see if there's been any changes. Even NASA has now got involved, and said that the concept of a super eruption from supervolcanoes needs to be re-evaluated. This comes after new research suggested that volcanic eruptions can still happen even without the presence of liquid magma. NASA said that supervolcano eruptions must be a high priority, and must be studied extensively, saying that they're more of a threat to human life than that of an asteroid or a comet. This is according to Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Professor Martin Danzig and a team from Oregon State University studied Lake Toba, which is a large body of water that sits on top of a supervolcano. Researchers studying the lake have said that it's the largest lake in Indonesia, and the largest volcanic lake in the world, and studying it has allowed them to learn a lot. For example, they revealed that the supervolcano below the lake erupted an estimated 69,000 to 77,000 years ago, noting that the explosion was so big that it created a climate-changing event felt around the world. This is due to the fact that the ejection of a large amount of volcanic ash causes a global darkness event, preventing the planet from sufficiently warming up, and causing a global ice age. This appears to have been the case a mere 100,000 years ago when the Toba eruption occurred, and nearly drove humanity to extinction. Prior to this event, there was an estimated 1 million human population. After the event took place, there were only 11,000 humans left, of which caused a massive bottleneck effect that allows us to see the time in which such an event took place. Additionally, this rapid death count occurred when the Toba super eruption caused a global blackout that lasted for more than 10 years. During this time, a massive ice age occurred, and an atmospheric cooling event that lasted for another 1,000 years. Professor Danzig said the following about the study. Supervolcano eruptions can impact global climate, to the point of tipping the Earth into a volcanic winter which is an abnormally cold period that may result in widespread famine and population disruption. The professor and their team said that supervolcano eruptions happens once every 17,000 years, but as previously mentioned, 
This cannot be used as an exact number, as two events that would have happened close to one another would have been counted as one. And also like the United States Geological Survey said, you can't go by previous eruptions. NASA have said that after looking at all the data, one of the best ways to stop or help with a supervolcano eruption would be to cool down the volcano itself, saying that this could be done via heat transfer, with the figure showing that if you could remove around 35% of the heat inside the supervolcano, then an eruption would no longer be a threat. When this was first being discussed, it was suggested that officials could build a giant aqueduct above Yellowstone, and simply increase the amount of water inside the Yellowstone system. However, Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory said this wasn't a very good idea. He said the following, People don't want their water spent that way. People are desperate for water all across the world, and so a major infrastructure project, where the only way the water is used is to cool down a supervolcano, would be very controversial. End quote. NASA then suggested drilling 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers down into the supervolcano and bringing down the pressure, noting that the water that would be used for this project could be used to generate electricity. NASA did say though that the project would cost over $3.46 billion, but said that it's one way that could possibly prevent a supervolcano eruption. Some people have voiced their concerns with this, and said that it's one thing to experiment inside a lab, but when you start messing with mother nature anything could go wrong, especially if it's never been done before. Many users echoed the same concerns, with one person saying the following, and what's their plan B if something goes wrong? I'm not saying that nothing should be done as I think it's important that we take this seriously, but what if a chain reaction goes off? What if we increase the chances of an eruption? Who's monitoring this? And whose fault is it if something goes wrong? Also, testing it on Yellowstone, a supervolcano which is best known for being massive, and having the ability to wipe out pretty much the entire United States does seem like somewhat of a gamble. End quote. Mr. Wilcox did acknowledge this, saying the following, the most important thing with this is to do no harm. If you drill into the top of the magma chamber and try to call it from there, this would be very risky. This would make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture. Yellowstone explodes roughly every 600,000 years, and it's around 600,000 years since it last exploded, which should be cause for us to sit up and take notice. End quote. Some scientists have spoken out about this, and said that the amount of water you'd need in order to make a small dent would have to be around the size of one of the Great Lakes in America. For context, Lake Superior holds three quadrillion gallons of water. So what do you make of these announcements? And do you think that a supervolcano will erupt within your lifetime? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.